today on Fresno State Focus, DACA students open up about their college experiences and their fears of deportation. Also, we take to the grill of a hot taco truck in town and find out what it's like to run the family biz. Plus, we'll take a look at the Fresno State football players who are battling it out for starting quarterback. Fresno State Focus starts now. Something needs to go. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Gabriela Garcia. And I'm Connor Matson. People are freaking out. We we'll may be out of avocado soon if the southern border closes. Say goodbye to avocado toast. President Trump is threatening to close the border, making it impossible for imported food supplies to enter the United States. About $14 million worth of produce goes across the border daily. Now today, the president says some commerce may be allowed through the border, but he's still holding strong against opening the border for illegal immigrants. Chicago is celebrating a historic election today with the first African-American woman mayor. The newly elected mayor has no political experience. The former federal prosecutor says she is hoping to bring change to Chicago with gun violence, segregation, and economic inequality. And she wants to protect the communities. Well, look, we got to do everything we can to speak to and protect our immigrant uh, communities. I spoke at length about that last night, but I also want to make sure that the as city of Chicago gets its fair share of federal tax dollars. So we're going to stand strong and speak our values and we're going to keep pushing uh, back against hate. She will be the first woman and openly gay mayor of Chicago. Former Vice President Joe Biden is defending himself and apologizing for misunderstandings when it comes to how he touches women. Two women recently said the former Vice President made them feel uncomfortable. Biden shared a video on Twitter today saying he, how he will be more mindful about respecting personal space in the future. Biden responded to the accusations by saying he had always viewed politics as a way to make connections and show support and affection. An Indiana school system is testing a new program that will reuse a perfectly good food that would normally go into the trash. The school has partnered with Cultivate, a food rescue group, to turn it into a take-home meals for hungry kids. This new program is just getting started and hopes to expand to all 21 schools in Indiana School District. Students who are here under the DACA program Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals have a lot of challenges to overcome. Many DACA recipients fear deportation and experience racism. Three DACA students who are thriving in spite of the obstacles told me about their fears and how they survive. Fresno City College sophomore Carlos is a DACA student. He was brought to this country when he was a baby without legal status. He says he's scared that he could be deported because of stepped-up enforcement of the border. I heard rumors about they leasing people's information to, the, to ICE, and I started building fear because I'm not the only immigrant in my family. And what if I'm doing all this and it can just be taken away by someone's decision? More than 72,000 undocumented students are enrolled in California colleges. About half are protected by DACA status. Arturo Tehran says he lives in constant fear of deportation while working to pay for his college tuition. Having to find like a job without the proper documentation is kind of uh, stressful because you never know uh, when somebody could report you or somebody like from the authorities could come and just take you away. Fresno State alumna Nancy Baragan says that as a former DACA student, she was afraid and uncomfortable to ask for help. I think asking for help, trying to find someone who you feel comfortable with, disclosing your legal status, and just having these normal conversations with is really hard. And when I was in freshman in college, I didn't know who to turn to. Baragan graduated last year and now has a full-time job. But for many DACA students, 
fear of deportation is their everyday reality. For more information about DACA, you can visit the Dream Success Center in the Joyal Administration Building, room 224 on the second floor. The Dream Success Center is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, reporter Cedric Hood shows us some fun things to do this weekend and a cool place to relax when you're on campus. Artist who displays their art but doesn't sell it? Why all that when we come back? Plus, a focus on your weather. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. This is our Fresno State, forming relationships and learning experiences that last a lifetime. Making friends who are like family, learning from professors who treat us like family, and earning a degree to make a better future for our family. Engaging our alumni generation by generation by generation. This is our Fresno State. Welcome to the family. Hello, I'm Connor Matson, and right now we have a focus on our weather. And look at this is our sky cam right at Fresno State showing partly cloudy skies. But let's move on to national weather. So we have weather all across the country. And we look on the East Coast over here, we have a huge storm right up here bringing very heavy rain to the East Coast. But let's move on to the West Coast right over here. We have partly cloudy skies all across from Idaho all the way down to Baja, California. But let's take a look at our Western satellite right here. We have four low pressure systems building up all along the whole uh, Pacific coast here. Let me move, let me move so you guys can see this. We have that one building up right out there and that's gonna bring us rain here in a few days. Then let's get our current temperatures right here. We have Shaver Lake, oh, at 53. And then Merced right over there at 69. So it's pretty much low 70s throughout the valley, high 60s. But when we get tonight, temperatures are gonna drop to low 50s, high 40s, like Visalia down there at 51. And Modesto up there at 53, but then Shaver Lake is up in the mountains, so it's obviously gonna be cold. And that's gonna be right there at 32 degrees. And then our air quality is gonna be beautiful so it's good all the way across the whole valley. Let me, let's, let's get a glimpse of this from Madera, Fresno, Kings, Tulare, and Merced. It's a beautiful day all across the whole valley. And let's move on to our extended outlook, our seven day forecast. We're going to start right over here on Wednesday, cloudy Wednesday and Thursday. So tomorrow it's going to be um, high 60s. And then that low pressure system that I was talking about, it's going to come in on Friday and bring us rain in the afternoon. Then Saturday, Sunday, Monday is also going to be cloudy. And then lastly, Tuesday right there, it's going to be partly cloudy. So a light jacket, low 70s, you'll be fine. And and that's a focus on the weather. Here's Tori with a tasty meal on wheels. Thank you so much, Connor. So I'm gonna show you how one family's passion for fresh local eats turned into a successful family run business. Is it, yeah. So, yes. Do you like any salsa? Um, so who doesn't love tacos? You might see a bright teal taco truck around Fresno at events like Art Hop or right outside coffee shops in downtown Fresno. This is the Taste Kitchen's food truck, family owned and operated for four years. The owners will tell you it's not easy starting a business from scratch. Um, well, it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of ups and downs, you know, with the restaurant business. You know, it's uh, always a risk starting off. You don't know how, how it's going to go. Uh, we've been blessed and, you know, thankful that, that things have been, have been going pretty good for us. The Francos say in this home away from home, teaching family values is important, along with the values of hard work. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been challenging, but it's also uh, shown our kids that, you know, through hard work, you know, you can, you can accomplish your, your goal, your dream. And One of those dreams for this family was to open up a restaurant, and they did it. While Martin runs the food truck, his cousin Jaime Rosas 
helps run the restaurant. But make no mistake, sometimes working with your family members can be challenging. You know, at the end of the day, you know, no matter how rough the day is, you know, it's just it's restaurant business. If someone gets mad at each other, oh, you spilled something or you took out order wrong, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not nothing personal. It's just, you know, it's for the business, you know, and we, I think we all learn to, uh, to, uh, to not take that personal and just, you know, you know, family aside and business, then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, we're always going to be, you know, family and working together. The Taste Kitchen will be celebrating its fourth food truck anniversary, April 13th at Taps and Cellar in Fresno. Back to you, Gabby. Now let's talk about our health. As college students, being healthy is sometimes one of the last things on our mind. Cynthia Galvin is a health education specialist at the Fresno County Department of Health and is here today to share with us a couple of tips on how to stay healthy. Hi, Cynthia. Thank you for being here today. Hi. So can you tell us what are a couple of those tips that you have for us on staying healthy? Well, for sure, a good tip is just balance. Balance and moderation and kind of just eating the my plate way. Definitely. So what is, what is exactly the my plate? Well, I bought a little plate. So this is a my plate, oh, wow. <laughs> and it consists of five food groups. So we have our fruits, our vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. So it's always important to eat all five food groups. That's actually a very nice presentation <laughs> to be able to separate it. What would you like if students were going grocery shopping? What were what would it be like affordable items that you would say would fall into those groups? So definitely looking at the fruits and vegetables that are in in season. So when there's fruit and vegetables that are in season, they're usually cheaper versus when they're out of season, it's a lot more expensive. And also just planning. So going to the grocery and grocery store and having a list and making sure you're buying what's on your list versus oh I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna <laughs> grab that, and it adds up. So definitely, what would you say? would be some of the food items that should be recommended for students on their list right now? Uh, definitely just having some fruits, some vegetables like bananas, apples, zucchini. I know that's kind of hard to eat sometimes. <laughs> um, and then some whole grains, so whole wheat, bread, um, toast. So you can make toast and avocados, how yeah. we were talking about earlier. <laughs> the avocado yeah. toast, super good. I know I'm guilty. I eat a lot of avocado toast. We do have here, I see you brought some very cool props with us. So can you tell us a little bit about all of this that you brought in today? So we brought in some samples or some examples of sugar, um, a big contributor to eating extra calories and like being extra weight, sorry, is sugar sweetened beverages. So here's an example of a 20 ounce um, soft Drink, so soda oh, and wow. this is how much um, sugars in a soda and that is just 20 lot. ounces that is a lot of <laughs> sugar <laughs> and then we have a uh, other example sports drink this is only a 20 ounce as well and it's just something that there's a misconception that it's healthy but there's a lot of added sugar in there and the big big surpriser is our fruit smoothie so this is a 20 ounce fruit smoothie wow so this is more than a soda and then our energy drink, because I know college students, I used to be there, I used to drink a lot of energy drinks, and I would drink two, and this is just a 16 ounce can. So. Wow. <laughs> and what was that last one? This one is um, a mocha freeze coffee drink. Yeah. So. Why, why do you think that there would be way more sugar in the fruit smoothie as compared to the soda drink? Um, I think because there's natural sugar as well as oh, the okay. fruit, and also the added sugar that we put on top of the fruit. Oh, wow. Yeah. That definitely scares me <laughs> into drinking like soda pop and mocha drinks and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> if you would like more information, you can head over to the FCDPH.org. We've been talking with Cynthia Galvin from the County Department of Fresno Health. Thank you, Cynthia, for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> When it comes to art, there's usually a price tag attached to it. However, that isn't the case. For an MCJ student, Elodie Resendez shows us the artistic process of Alexandra Harrell and why she doesn't charge for her art pieces. For many artists, having the opportunity to display their artwork is a dream come true. To be able to sell their pieces, now that's success. But for one local artist, letting go of a painting just isn't that easy. I get really attached to my art. So when I'm working on it for such a long time and like putting so much effort and like emotion into it and then it finally is done and I'm like so happy with it. It's kind of hard to part with it sometimes just because it means so much to you. Alexandra Harrell is a self-taught artist. She used paintings as a way to personalize her bedroom walls. 
Alexandra usually works on her pieces in the comfort of her own bedroom. As you can see here, she has an easel and all her utensils ready to go. But now, thanks to a former classmate, Alexandra is covering the walls of a studio in downtown Fresno. Ali's art is very original. When I book an artist, I want to see them through their art, if that makes sense. Alexandra's pieces were a huge hit. She had art lovers raving about her work. I want this in my house, but I want, if I had a dungeon, I would do right here. <laughs> Alexandra's working on two pieces right now, a painting of an albino bunny, which so happens to be her favorite animal, and she's also working on a charcoal drawing. Like, starting to like it. I'm trying not to like it. <laughs> Clearly a battle she's working through, learning to love what she makes and loving it enough to let it go. Elodie Descendis, Fresno State Focus. Harrell is expected to show her new artwork at the Art Hop in July. Maybe by then she'll be open to selling some of her pieces. Being at school all day can sometimes make students feel drained. Taking a nap in your car can be uncomfortable. Driving home to nap is time consuming. Cedric is at the recharge zone to show us how we can recharge in between classes here on campus. Hi Cedric, T tell us about it. All right, Connor. Hey, guys. I'm at the third, actually the basement of the University Student Union in front of the recharge zone. So before I tell you guys what this is, we're going to find out from my friend Anna over here, who's in the information center right next door. So Anna, how are you today? Good. And so Anna, tell us a little bit, what is the recharge zone? Yeah, so the recharge zone is like a little napping station that student can um, can make a reservation for. So they have to come in, show me their student ID, and then I'd make an appointment for them through the our computer and then for whatever time slot they wanted, and then they can head on in and um, take a nap. Perfect. So I got my student ID card. That's step one. So do a lot of students use it? Um, actually, a lot of students do. Like usually during midterms and finals, um, the students that do know about this come in very frequently to make um, nap pod reservations. Perfect. And what's beneficial about using the recharge zone? Um, I feel like students that have like a lot of classes throughout the day and are on campus for a long time um, benefit coming here because they get like a little jump start once they take a nap to finish off the rest of their day. Thank you, Anna. So I'm good to go, right? So I'm actually going to head over there right now, and I'm excited because I had classes today. I've been working on a show, so let's see what it's like. So as you can see, it's really nice and blue in here, actually. So I see that it has, like, some scenery of, like, waterfalls on the wall. There's blue lights and everything, and there's two little pods, so you can definitely bring a friend in here or bring someone. So if you sit right here, I'm going to try to get comfortable a little bit for you guys. And it even, like, oh, check that out. You can even adjust the seating. You can adjust the grip. I don't think it has a massager on here, but the seats look very comfortable and things like that. And I enjoy the blue lights. There's a little bit of music going on. There are wipes so that you can make sure you get it nice and clean because you never know who is sitting uh, prior to you. But as far as that goes, I think I'm going to take a nap here. I got my student ID card, so it's super easy. And I think that all students should definitely check this out if they haven't. But... Guess what, guys? A good way to before you recharge for the weekend is to take a nice little nap. So I'm going to show you guys what things are going on in the Valley this weekend so that you can take your nap and then head out with your friends and family. Get those hats out. Big Hat Day in Old Town Clovis is back for its 81st year. This Saturday and Sunday, take the family out to this 15-block celebration. There will be shopping, food, and entertainment for all ages. This event is free and gates will open at 9 a.m. Are you a comic fan? Fresno State will host its fifth Comic Con this Saturday. FresCon, as it's called, is open to the public. The event will have 40 vendors, a kid zone, a community fair, and more. And the best part about all of this is that it's completely free admission and parking is free as well. The fun begins at 10 a.m. at the Fresno State campus. Don't forget to dress as your favorite superhero. The Fresno Grizzlies opening night is this Thursday. Baseball fans can have a hot dog, a brew, and watch the Grizzlies take on the Reno Aces. Fans may notice a few changes and improvements to Chicansey Park as part of the park's $4 million renovation. The game kicks off at 7.05 and fans can stick around after for an awesome fireworks show. You can get your tickets at the box office or online. Want to test out your superpowers this weekend? Valley Children's Hospital is hosting its Run with the Heroes Awareness Walk and 5K Run this Sunday. 
all participants will receive a medal and some delicious hotcakes at the finish line. The online registration is closed, but you can arrive before 9 a.m. on Sunday to register in person. If good music and dancing sounds fun to you, then you might want to check out Fresno State's Gay Gatsby's Queer Prom. There will be a DJ, dance floor, photo booth, drag performances, and more. Tickets begin at $10 for students and $12 for community members. Everyone is welcome to attend this event this Saturday night at 6 p.m. in the Satellite Student Union. So many options to choose from this weekend. Make sure you choose a good one. Connor, back to you. Coming up in sports, we'll see how the Fresno State softball team did over the weekend in the Fresno State Invitational. Stay tuned for sports with Adrian Bluevano. I got the ball out here. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head, I got that bulldog spirit. Up in my head, up in my head to say. I got that bulldog spirit. Deep in my heart, deep in my heart, deep in my heart. I got that bulldog spirit. Deep in my heart, deep in my heart to stay. Deep in my heart, deep in my heart, deep in my heart. Deep in my heart to stay. I got that bulldog spirit. Down in my toes, down in my toes, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit. Down in my toes, down in my toes. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. I truly feel the heartbeat of everyone who's invested in this place, and I know why we're here. To develop our young men into winners in every respect, as people of character and leaders of integrity. To demonstrate what it is to be a community working as one. Respecting traditions and creating new ones. That's building something bigger than just a great football team. That's being a bulldog. Welcome to Sports. I'm Adrian Lovino. The Fresno State baseball team started its 13-game road trip this past weekend in San Diego State. The Bulldogs had a great job with their bats. They helped that capture the first two games of the series. McCarthy Tatum took this ball deep, which you're about to see, in the top of the fourth. That was his third home run of the season. The Dogs faced number two Stanford yesterday and fell 2-0. to zero. Fresno State travels to Eugene, Oregon tomorrow for a four-game series with the Ducks. You can watch the series on the Pac-12 network. Fresno State completed a perfect week of games at the Fresno State Invitational during softball, finishing the tournament with a 6-0 record. Fresno State got help from their pitcher, Danielle uh, Haley Dulcini. She had, two, she had two wins on Sunday, throwing five shutout innings with six strikeouts to earn the win versus Santa Clara. She picked up her second save of the year with a perfect ninth inning against CSU Bakersfield. The Dogs return to the Mountain West play this weekend with a three-game series in Las Vegas at UNLV. Joining me now is a member of Fresno FC, Director of Communications, Angel Moreno. Angel, you're a Fresno State alum, so welcome back. Thanks for having me. Glad to be back. So three games of the season, Fresno FC is. How have they been doing so far? Well, great. We're unbeaten, right? <laughs> um, but things are going well. Uh, we have one win, two draws, unfortunately. Not too many of us are fond of ties after I think we got 13 last season, but we're off to a good start. Very promising start, and uh, it's going to be a really, really good weekend this weekend. A huge weekend, you mentioned, with Phoenix rising on the road. How tough is that early on this season? Well, as, as, well, as our viewers will know, they're the Western Conference defending champions, mm -hmm. and um, fortunately, to our advantage, Didier Drogba has retired, so <laughs> we won't be facing him. That's good. We didn't face him last year. He was out with an injury, but... Um, 
It's going to be a big game. It's a very, very big game. Phoenix is always a top team in the Western Conference. And when we went over there last year, we took an early lead, but unfortunately a late goal saw us, a late goal in stoppage time saw us end in a draw. So I think we're, we're going to come back with a little more fight, a little more bite, and we definitely want to come out of that, come out of Arizona with three points. Now we have some things down here. We have a, a scarf. My favorite part about this scarf is a skyline that you see right here. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's our Skyline scarf. That's the name of it, yeah. And then we also have this red jersey that's new this season that came out. And what does this, red. Red, yeah, this red jersey signify? So um, the reason we made this red jersey, and as you can tell, the crest and our brand um, or our front of jersey sponsor is in black and white, it's to pay homage and give a little tribute to Fresno Fuego. Uh, you always have to think of where you came from, where you grew up from, your roots. And so that's what that red jersey represents. So we're going to wear it three times a year, uh, specifically on Friday home matches. The first one, Friday, April 26th, that one's against... Tulsa Roughnecks? No, that's our next home that's game. That's next yes. Uh, I'm spacing on that one. But either way. Keep in mind, Twitter feed. You always yeah. that, so keep Follow us on, on Twitter and Instagram at FFC Foxes for all the latest updates. But yeah, every, every Friday home match, three this season, one in this month, one in June, one in August, we'll have, be wearing those red kits in honor of Fuego. I can't wait to see all those red kits on the field. It's yeah. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one with Fire Squad. We've been speaking to Director of Communications, Angel Morano. Thank you for being back here at Fresno State. Thank you for having me back. Fresno's FC returns home to Chansey Park on April 13th against Tulsa. Thanks again, Angel. Fresno State football head coach Jeff Tefford is looking for his next starting quarterback for the 2019 season. Here's how the QB competition is going. Gone are the touchdown completions from quarterback Marcus McMurray in 2018. Fast forward to this spring and there are three quarterbacks vying for the starting job. Senior Jorge Reyna, redshirt freshman Stephen Comstock, and freshman Ben Woldridge. You can only have one quarterback on the field, and offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb believes the spot is there for the taking. I think it's wide open, and I think that that's something that's going to continue to be, uh, obviously, a competition daily. And, you know, not just the effectiveness of what routes they're throwing and how they're throwing them, but also being the voice and the leader of this offense. Reyna was the leader last year, playing in 11 games as the backup quarterback. For head coach Jeff Tefford, it's time for Reyna to take the next step in the QB process. Jorge, you know, he's been in that role as a backup before, but now all of a sudden, you know, he's getting more reps. And so it's a process for all of them. It's, it has to be open competition. Uh, it's healthy for us. Uh, our job that we said in the quarterback group is we want to make each other better for the team. It doesn't matter who is going to be the starter. We just want to support and make sure that whoever starts is the best for the team. Team rules. Bulldog fans have the opportunity to get their own glimpse of the QB battle on April 13th during the spring preview. The event at Bulldog Stadium is free and fans are encouraged to attend at 10.30 a.m. That's your focus on sports. John Jay, what do you have for us at the monitor? Speaking of sports, Adrian, the Fresno Grizzlies opening game is tomorrow. The Grizzlies will take on the Reno Aces in a five-game series Thursday to Monday. The Grizzlies are now the AAA affiliate of the, National, the Washington Nationals and look to keep producing great prospects for the next level after doing the same in the past years for the Astros and the Giants. One prospect by the name of Adrian Sanchez was just recently called up to the Major League Club because shortstop Trey Turner got hurt yesterday. Not, so not only is the Major League franchise different, but as Cedric mentioned earlier, Chuck Chancey Park also has some big changes, including a new splash park and a totally different left field area of the stands. Tomorrow's game starts at 7.05. Back to you, Connor and Gabriella. Finally today, thousands upon thousands of jellyfish can be seen along the Channel Islands Hopper in Oxnard right now. The jellyfish have been gathering in large numbers in the harbor since mid-March. The species of jellyfish appear translucent white and do not sting. According to ecologist and professor Sean Anderson, winds and currents are pushing the sea creatures into the coves, which makes them more visible. It's not clear how long the jellyfish will keep hanging out in Oxnard. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to check out our social medias, Instagram and Twitter at Fresno State Focus.